Well, the pictures are just terrifying. They show you just the extent of the damage. Thousands of Floridians left homeless after Hurricane Ian cut a path of destruction across the southwest part of the state. What the winds didn't flatten, the heavy rains and storm surge swamped. Even those, some of those people who have lost everything, many are still having to rebuild. But you have to ask, is it worth it? Is it wise? Should they? As climate change continues to bring rising ocean levels and more violent storms, the EPA also warns that along the Florida's Atlantic and Gulf Coasts, the land surface is sinking. Kobe Karp joins us now. He's an architect and a member of the American Institute of Architects. Hi, Kobe. Welcome to the show. All right, look, so, so it's one thing to say after a hurricane like this, we're going to rebuild. But knowing hurricanes are only getting stronger, should we rebuild in this area of Southwest Florida? Um, so that's a very good question. And historically we have always um, planned and built around these um, areas, uh, not only in the United States of America, but everywhere else. And so, look, I have had been through Hurricane Andrew and now this hurricane and this aftermath, I think will lead us to rebuild in this area. I uh, think that that's what will happen. Um, and overall, we will find a way to do so. We've been doing this for thousands of years from Venice, um, Italy to Venice, uh, Florida. So we will rebuild. So, so you will rebuild in these same areas. I, I want to know there's a report from the NOAA Weather Agency saying that sea levels are on track to rise more than a foot by 2050. With that in mind, how would that factor in to rebuilding in these areas? So what will happen here is that specifically the rebuilding of this area, we will build it according to the wind velocity and codes that we've implemented after Hurricane Andrew in 1992. But now specifically what we will do is we will raise the structures to accommodate not only the floodplain, but also the wave crest that has been so strong through this area. And so this wave crest will allow us to raise the structures, the living spaces, and therefore, by definition, if we're able um, to connect ourselves to a power grid, whether it's, for example, solar that we put on the homes today that is then connected to a battery pack inside your garage is uplifted with a backup generator that's an electric, you don't even have the downtime after this hurricane uh, watershed event. What we do have here is an opportunity to really study and really look into how we are designing and building and planning because after Hurricane Andrew, we overhauled our code in Florida completely. Hurricane impact glass and structures today did withstand the hurricane. That's how we are designing our homes and our buildings um, throughout. But I think that there is a positive element that hopefully will come out of here, which is all of us concentrating together, not only meeting the wind event, but also meeting the water and the flood event not only for water level rising, not only for flood mitigation, but also for, in this example, the wave crest that um, comes through um, after the hurricane and during the hurricanes. All right, uh, really interesting. Kobe Carp, thank you.